It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, showbiz, sport and beyond, as well as those who simply have a big story to tell. Tonight, Ji Hun Park, a woman who faced starvation, torture and persecution in North Korea before coming to the UK. She escaped from the country in 1998 and later became a British citizen after suffering forced repatriation in China. She fled to the Chinese border with her brother after their father and uncle died of starvation when famine struck. She became a victim of human trafficking and was sold into forced marriage to a Chinese farmer with whom she had a child. In 2004, she was arrested and sent back to North Korea, where she faced torture and persecution in a forced labor camp. But she was thrown out when they thought she was close to death with gangrene. A stranger nursed her back to health and helped her to escape and reunite with her son. Miss Park is now a language tutor living in the Fairfield area of Berry and campaigns for the rights of all North Koreans to live without fear of torture and persecution. She said, in comparison, my life in the UK is heaven. And I'm delighted to say that Ji Hoon Park joins me now. Hi, Ji Hoon. Good to have you on the programme. How, how long have you been in the UK now? Uh, I've been living here for 14 years now. 14 years. Has your time in the UK, has it healed the wounds, these psychological wounds that, that you've suffered? Um, well, I live in here, totally different world, mm. because it's North Korea is hell and this is heaven. Yeah. So first time was didn't understand any English, but many it's the warming when people and the British people helped me. So that's why today I am here. Yeah. Of course. So you were born in North Korea. Mm-hmm. Where, whereabouts in North Korea? Um, I was born in North Hamgyong province mm-hmm. in Chongjin. It's near the China and Russia border areas. It's part of the north side. And of course, it was a totalitarian regime from the moment you were born. Uh, did it change as you were growing up? Oh, never changed. And uh, when I lived in North Korea, I never heard totalitarian regime or dictatorship because my country leader was great leader, not only in North Korea, in all over the world. Right. Yeah. So we learned that is Kim Il-sung's history and he fight Japanese era in 1945. Mm. So then Korea is revolutions. So we believed that and we never heard that World War II or what happened in outside the countries. We only learned about the Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il and nowadays Kim Jong-un. And tell me about your childhood. Uh, when I was a child, my parents always told to us, be careful when you say what is outside kind of world mm-hmm. because it's a daytime, it's, it's a bird heard your voice. And the night time, is, mouse is heard your voices. So it was really scared. <laughs> always we, when we said some word is put out, that is always first thought about it. this is wrong or right word. So it's life is totally controlled. All people is kind of not personal life, it's kind of machine's life. Yeah. So in North Korea, so we wake up at the same time, still 5 a.m., it's the same times because it's a, a many village or apartment. We have got one of the captain. So yeah. captain is shouting to us, wake up, wake up. Then we woke up together and then cleaning the roadside, apartment, inside. And after it's uh, uh, father is work and the children go to school. So I was a child. I usually played is world games with my uh, friends. Because it's North Korea always said that it's America and South Korea's enemy countries. Mm. So that's why Korea is divided. Mm. So we continue to fight America and South Korea. And one day we revolutions in Korea. So do you feel that as a child and growing up, you were being brainwashed by the state? That time I didn't understand what means brainwashing. Mm. But in, it was normal to you. Yeah, that is a normal life where, where I was or I was born, and the father's mother, father, mother teaching the same issues. 
Kim Il-sung is great their leader in our country, and the school is the same, public place is the same, and in our home, it's without the family pictures, only Kim Il-sung and the Kim Jong-il pictures. No family home. pictures at home? Yes. Just yes. Kim, Kim Il... Uh, uh, Kim Il-sung and Kim Il-sung, yeah, yeah, and Kim Il-jun. Yeah. Um, now the, the current uh, president. And w- did you have poverty as a child? W- was you, did your family have money? Oh, no, it's North Korea has totally not given to us. It's, we, my mother is a housewife, so she mm. never worked. Only my father is work. So he gets the salary, but this salary is not enough not to buy is one kilogram rice in a market. So kind of our life is modern slavery in our now 20th century. So your your father worked full time and he could not afford to buy rice in the market? Yes, because his government gave to us rice uh, every month. Allowance? Yes, yeah, yes. So every month, uh, it's uh, twice a month, uh, North Korea government gave to us rice. So it's depending. Housewife is 300 grams a day, and the student is 400 grams a day, and the workers between 700 or 900 grams. So that is the, or my house, my family is five, uh, five. My father is work, so 700 grams. So children is 400 grams a day, and the mother is 300 grams. So that is. And, and hey, meat, 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 meat? No, meat is also special. Meat and egg is also special. That is Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il's birthday they mm. gave to us. So you only got meat and eggs and high-quality protein on the president's birthday, the oh, leader's yeah, birthday? And also oil and, you know, the soybeans mm. and the salt also government gave to us. We are, salt was rationed? Yes, yes, salt, salt, yeah. So... You you were hungry as a child. Oh, of course, but we never said that is we were hungry because government said to us socialism country socialism country people never hungry. You see that is South Korea is capitalism and many bigger and hungry people outside and homeless people. So you are nothing to envy. This country is nothing to envy because that is a socialism country. Yeah. And did you see? state violence when you were growing up? Oh, yes. yeah. I see uh, lots of things, and I still memorize uh, two things. One is man is executions in front of us because uh, he was hunger, so he killed the cow. Right. cow. So it's North Korea cow meaning is, is, pop, is more popular than person. So he executions. In North Korea, a cow is more important than a person. Yes. A yes. Higher status. <laughs> yes, because it's a uh, cow is a, usually is agriculture workers. And it's useful. Uh, yeah, yes. So, but the person is hunger, so he killed the cow. So he executions uh, in front of the, to us. Yeah. So, so public executions. Yes, yeah, public well, uh, executions um, always happen. Yeah. In in the streets or, or uh, where? In the riverside, riverside. Riverside. Yeah, riverside. And were you encouraged to watch these executions? Because uh, that is the uh, is publicly allowed. It's uh, schools and the housewives or is uh, uh, workers allowed, yeah. and we together in there because that is uh, government said to us you have to watch. If you is banished these countries, how what happened next? So they make you watch the execution yes. of a man murdered for being hungry, <laughs> for killing a, for killing a cow. Um, and and what what are your emotions as a child or as a teenager watching an execution? What are you thinking? Um, we were really scared, scared, and we couldn't say any word because that is a, if I said something wrong word come out, mm. it's all families sent to political prisons. So my neighbor also same is that in early 1990s, North Korea stopped distributions. So this family father went to his hometown, it's a different city, and he met the, his friend and spoke about it's our government's problems. Yeah. So somebody reported to him, and then all families sent to political prison camp. And... There's obviously no proper justice judicial system. The state just decides who goes to jail, who to execute. There's obviously no democracy. Uh, do you think it's worse now under Kim Jong-un? 
Yes, yeah, yeah. Why? Never, never Why? changed because it's a, uh, it's North Korea is born in 1948, you yeah. know, and then many people learn the Kim Il Sung and the Kim Jong Il's history together. Yeah. But the Kim Jong Un was new one is only 10 years ago came out. Yeah. And uh, also in 1990s, it's North Korea all those much, and you know the famine. And then three million people died of starvation. And after three million people starved to death. Yeah, that's times only three years times. And after people just opened their eyes and they started is they legal illegal businesses in market yeah. and everywhere. So after people understood understand this North Korea is not a great country, you know. And then same as me who escaped to North Korea and the family members now lives in South Korea or United Kingdom, and we send the money it's a, it's a, to North Korea. Yeah. That is also illegal, but we send the money, yeah. and we tell it to them the truth stories. North Korea is not a great country. So now people change their mind. So Kim Jong-un is really scared, scared about that. So now he's controlled again, so imp- stopped information again. And you know, this last month, he said that North Korea is now is locked down because it's COVID inside there. But that is totally... <laughs> Another lie. A liar. Because it, you know, yesterday they said that is a North Korea scientist has already found out that what COVID is uh, came through inside North Korea. That is from South Korea in balloons. Yeah. You know, the COVID, that is a virus, came to the balloons and then affected inside. Yeah. Who's believe that? This, that this is, was a new story yeah. in the last 24 hours that they said that yeah. these balloons are sent to, to help people <laughs> yeah. from, from outside North yes, Korea. Yeah, yeah. And they're saying if you touch these balloons, you're going to get COVID. Yeah, yeah. So you were lied to nonstop in your life. Um, will this regime end? I don't know when, I don't know when it is exactly safe, but I hope once that, you know, there is a 1950s in June, it's a Korean war is happened, mm. and then British soldiers also joined this Korean war, is South Korea side. So now it's a South Korea is a freedom country, yeah. but this war is still not finished. Mm. But every, but many people is forgotten, it's British people also forget. So my hope is British society, have been teaching the again, that is what's happened in Korean War, yeah. and then teaching the again, there is a communism and the socialism, how destroyed our lives, and give to them opportunities. So people have to learn that is communism, is China, GCP, and North Korea socialism. So then they truly see what's happened inside North Korea. So this voice has changed. This, this, this is what we need. And, and you've just said there that communism and socialism destroyed your life. I was talking about it on the show just uh, uh, on Wednesday uh, in, in place of Dan Wooten talking about, you know, socialism coming back to Western Europe, collectivism, <laughs> the death of the individual, an extreme version is North Korea. You're out now. Um, and I think you have political ambitions. Um, is that right, Ji Hoon? I, I, I think that you're a conservative... Uh, yeah. Politician? Yeah, yes, yeah. So would you like to be in parliament or what, what are your what would you like to uh, what would you like to achieve? Um at the moment so I don't know, but it's, I never give up my personal life and the political journeys because without the politics, uh, we don't get to pull the freedom's life. So I continue to follow this political my life. Do we take our freedom in the West for granted? Um in I've been living in the UK for 14 years, so Britain people really like independent and also the pop life. So freedom is Britain people more like is freedoms, but some younger people still forget that is freedom is need duty and responsibility, and freedom is not free. So I am also human rights activist, so I continued telling the people. Is that the, if you never care about the you freedoms, and then next generations could be like the same as me, modern day slaveries. Yeah. So we. It's it's a very powerful message, and freedom must always be fought for. As you said, freedom is not free. What a line! I've got to say, the greatest privilege, Ji Hun, to meet you, and I hope you come back and tell the rest of your story because we could do two hours, and we still yeah. wouldn't cover it.